Um, I just thought it was interesting that you used the term this innovative approach, uh, Mr. Watt. Um, and you, like we're not talking about the uh, rights or wrongs of investment in research. We're talking about the handling of this particular proposal. And um, I think it's a bit of a misnomer to refer to it as an innovative approach. It was a serious mishandling of a proposal. And I happen to be somebody who has been very supportive of the whole idea of enhancing public health. I've been very conscious of it for a long time. And I think it was very clear during the early days of the pandemic just how weak that function was within the health service. And as far as I know, it is the only dis discipline within health that doesn't have an academic chair. And I think it would have been, you know, a very good idea to have an underpinning in one of the universities. Um, but what we're talking about here today is how you, as Secretary General of the Department, handle this. I find your presentation, your opening statement, curiously vague, because the actions that you took were very specific. And the, you know, you, what you said in the letter to Trinity was very specific. So I think you're kind of, I think it misrepresents the situation, to be honest with you. I, I, I don't think your, your opening statement is accurate. But there is one thing you say in that, and I just want you to clarify. You said that you're aware that the government had recently endorsed particular secondment arrangements for senior civil servants. What are those arrangements? Uh, so I was aware, and this is, we discussed this in relation to Deputy Lahart's questions, that there had been two secondments of Secretary General uh, to the third level sector, and th that, that had happened quite recently. And were those salaries paid? Are those salaries being paid by the uh, department? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I Deputy, think you, I'd say you do know. The, the, you know, were they, I, were they I, paid I, by the department? I, I, you're, the secretary, you're the accounting officer for the department. Uh, the Department of Health, yeah. But, yeah. But I, I suspect the salaries are paid by the university sector, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know the details of, of, of those. I thought you would have been aware of that. Okay, so look, as I say, you talk very vaguely about things, and you, you say that the letter to Trinity was from the department. Uh, it was from yourself. I mean, this, this is all about how you handled it, Mr. Watt. And you talk about that letter um, setting out the main draft details they're not really draft details, they're very specific in the letter to Trinity. And you say that Dr. Holohan's post was something that needed to be worked out. But that's not the impression that you gave in the letter to the Provost of Trinity. I mean, you said very specifically, you said, under the proposed agreement, the Department of Health commits to. So you were committing the Department of Health to funding, not only for the first year and a figure of two million euro, you are committing to multi-annual fund, funding over a period of about 10 years. So that's a, you know, comes to a figure of about 20 million euro, which is a very substantial amount of money. In addition to that, there's the question of uh, Dr. Holohan's salary over that period. And, you know, conservatively, that's probably something in the region of 3 million euro. So you're making a commitment of taxpayers' money of 23 million euro without the authority to do that. And, you know, this wasn't a vague thing where you're going to work out the details. You committed in that letter to a Trinity. And I believe, you know, you went beyond your authority and your power to do that. And it is very hard to understand the kind of, the mentality of somebody who would do that. 23 million euro is a huge amount of money. And I would expect that a Secretary General in a department uh, would first of all get informal approvals and certainly make the Minister aware of what you were proposing to do. But you already committed taxpayers' money in that letter and I don't think that's an acceptable action for a Secretary General to take. Um, I want to ask you, where did you get that two million euro figure, two million a year? How did you come up with that? Uh, th th thanks, Deputy. So, so just in relation to the letter, the letter says very clearly the details have to be worked out, and we were appointed somebody to work. It says out very trustee. clearly yeah. that so, so the you so the commit detail. to making an annual ring-fenced allocation sure. of two million euro for the duration of the secondment. Uh, 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 so that's and, pretty clear. Uh, and 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 the intention, uh, as as uh, we, we we set out, the intention was that money would be uh, additional funding that will be made available to the Health Research Board as part of their estimates. Uh, it'd be two million out of 
949 million of research funding this year across the entire system. Uh, so we felt that it was fully consistent with government's policy in relation to the co commitments here and the details we worked out and that would have got to a stage where the actual funding was to be made available to, to the Health Research Board and it wasn't for Trinity College, it was for the Health Research Board to distribute then on a competitive basis that all the institutions could compete for, that on that basis the Minister would would uh, would seek approval and sanction spending. Uh, but, but sorry, in, in relation that, to I think the... that was made very clear to everybody involved here well, that sorry. this was to move the process along that we'd make that. I think most reasonable people would read that letter to Trinity as you committing a figure of 23 million euro uh, without having the authority to do that. But I also want to ask you in relation to the uh, HRB, yeah. isn't it the case that you cut across the established procedures for decisions on the spending in relation to research and that you undermined the HRB? You didn't consult with them. You know, you you um, you committed HRB money and went against the, the normal procedures and you didn't consult with the HRB at all on this. So, so, so uh, it was not further so no, kind of overreach we, as Secretary General. No, we didn't commit health research. Uh, we, we, we committed to, to finding additional funding uh, for this project, which you'd administer through the Health Research Board. And then we would work through with them in the context of the estimates in September, October, how that would be managed, and there'd be further details around that program would be managed. So it wasn't okay. cutting, uh, okay. cutting okay, across them because they, they receive an allocation from the Minister for Health uh, yeah. and to, to deliver on various health objectives, and then they're mandated to manage these these programs and research funding, okay, but, and, but, they, and they do them on a competitive basis. But the procedures the don't allow you to commit their funding. So look, let's go back to that figure of no, two but million. It does, but just, it does, it does, so, it does, it does the, the, the government set out priority, they have set out now new priorities in terms of research funding. Okay, so, sorry, that, that is beside the point, okay? No, no, well, it's I, not I want to, I I want start, to ask can you, to, no, can, point can, can you the, please go back to the figure of 2 million euro? How did you come up so, with that figure? Uh, so the, 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 the figure of 2 million was to give, to give real substance to the seriousness of this endeavour. Okay. We're actually oh, serious. Okay. And, and, and to say, Deputy, like it's our... It's our strong view in the department and a strong advice that will be, will be given to the minister in the context of the next, uh, the next estimates round that we need to increase funding beyond that. No, I'm not talking about so the next not, round, okay? Mr. So Watt, I'm not talking about the next round. I'm talking about the two million euro that you committed to Trinity, okay, for research purposes. And I'm asking you, how did you come up with that figure of two million euro? What was that to cover? In any funding application, you sure. to put in detailed proposal and estimates. So what did that? What was that supposed to cover? So, so firstly, it wasn't committed to Trinity. It was a commitment to investment in public health research. And the intention, which I think it sets out very clearly, is that the CMO would be based in Trinity and would lead this. And we say in the letter, we talk about inter-institutional collaboration. And we talk about public health departments across the third level sector. We talk about... EU, WHO, the Department of Health, the HSE. So it wasn't, the money was not for Trinity College. The money was for this broad research agenda. Uh, and then the money would obviously fund the research, a research program, which would be based, as I understand it, the normal way, calls for papers or proposals for research, say, inviting interested parties to develop research program uh, to, to, and there'd be an allocation of funding. And, and but out, make, out of make, Trinity. So, so, so the intention was that the, that the, the research, the Health Research Board would say, we now are going to commit to investment in public health, and this is a sum, two million, this is a sum, now we think it should be more than that. And for, they would invite then, uh, they would invite proposals across the sector. Given the size of our, our country and given the relationship between the different sectors, we thought having a lead, and Dr. Ruhl, given what, what, what CMO has done over the last few years, having that leadership could bring together the different individuals and people to develop research right. programs was it, and then was on that it basis the, compete okay. for the funding. That Look, was the, was that it was the intention to establish a new department within Trinity? I don't think so, no. So where was it intended that Dr. Holohan would be based? The, the, re, the relevant department of, of Trinity College. And what, what is the relevant department then that you had in mind, Mr. Watt? I think it would be the, the bioscience, the, 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 the biomedicine. Right. I can help in this. Yeah. Trinity's intention was that it wouldn't be. In, it, they, they said so in their initial public utterances, uh, confined to one particular school, and it would be across schools for the purpose of essentially creating collaboration within the university around some of the, let's say, you know, 
non-traditional uh, uh, um, areas in terms of uh, health. So it wouldn't be just confined to health, but bringing in some other uh, disciplines that, that, that might help us to find other innovative ways. Located in what department? So, so two schools within Trinity. So it's a joint appointment between two schools, and they make that clear in the in the in the um, and that was the, that was the structure of the post. Okay, I, it, I'm, that's the structure of the post within Trinity. But just to, to just just to elaborate on what Robert's saying in relation to the the intention was ultimately, and I and I made this clear at the committee when I had when I mentioned private session, uh, and, and this was the shared intention uh, of everybody was that this would be a collaboration between all of the universities. That ultimately, yes, an individual who's based in one location would still have the obligation, if you like, to lead something that was about all of the institutions together. And if I can just put it in simple terms, it was about trying to ensure that as a country we could bring together the relevant, and there are university departments of public health, there are experts, and like people like Professor Cecil, Cecily Kelleher or Ivan Perry down in Cork uh, are relevant experts, to bring all of these people together in one collaboration. Uh, and if I can use the, kind of, the simple term, put on the Irish jersey, there is an enormous amount uh, of funding potentially available now through the newly established uh, Health Emergency Response Agency at a European level to massively increase Europe's clout in terms of its dealing with these issues. These are huge opportunities for us as a country to position ourselves, okay. to work together collaboratively to try and go after some of this funding. And that okay. was the broad objective uh, in relation to all of the universities working okay. together. So this was not about just Trinity, it was to be all of the universities. Right. My together. final question then is, Mr. Watt, what was the intention in relation to the research work? Was it intended that that would be public property or the property of the department, for example? Or, or what, what, was the, what was the issue there around that? Uh, so the so, so uh, I think uh, most research, certainly the intention of this area, this would be public property. Because clearly it's, it's public interest. Was that agreed it's, with it's, Trinity? It's uh, no, that, that I don't think we got into that level of detail, but, but that would be the research that would, would be there for the country and would uh, help uh, the Department of Health and the HSC and would also contribute to the wider discussion across the EU. And as uh, the CMO has mentioned, the, the significant research funding, that I think it's over 5 billion, which has now been set aside, 5.3 billion, which has been set aside for, for, for at European level. So, so okay, but, but if you're spending 23 million euro on research, you surely should have ensured that it would be the property of the Department of Health. So, so the, the, the Health Research Board have their, their guidelines in, in relation to this, I'm sure, which would have been, would have been uh, respected. But the, the, the intention here would be that uh, a properly-led programme across uh, the different public health departments, uh, led by Tony, would have been able to leverage very significant funds across the EU. So the contribution of the Irish Exchequer would have been a part of it. And it may, it may be, when the details are worked out, uh, that the balance would have changed between the Exchequer contribution and the EU contribution, that the Exchequer contribution could be lower. Like, it, you know, the, the, this is something which, as a country, we're going to have to invest in uh, yeah, significantly. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. You're, you're going into generalities. I just want to say, finally, that it's really regrettable that we're losing this capacity, this additional capacity within the health service as a result of the serious mishandling of this within the Department of Health.